The following message has been brought to you by the Mile High Flood District. Riprap is large, angular rock that is typically used for erosion protection along stream banks and shorelines. Riprap resists erosion through its size, its weight, and the way the angular pieces interlock with each other, similar to puzzle pieces. In Colorado, most of our riprap comes from mountain quarries such as the Albert Fry Quarry along I-70 near Idaho Springs. The rock comes from granite formations that produce high quality material that is heavy and durable. Less durable rock tends to crumble over time as it's exposed to the elements, but granite basically lasts forever. The quarries typically blast the rock and then sort the resulting material by size using screens for smaller rock and visually for larger rock. There are also mines along river corridors, such as those found around the Fair Play area, where usable riprap is mined right out of the ground. Here is a pile of Fair Play riprap that was trucked into a project site. And here is what that material looked like in place. Riprap is made up of well-graded rock of various sizes, so that void spaces between larger rocks can be filled with smaller rocks to provide a dense, interlocking cover over the underlying surface. Riprap provides protection by resisting the erosional forces of shear stress that flowing water exerts on the bed and banks. This is why the size and weight of the rock are important. Riprap gradation is also important because it creates a sort of filter that protects the smaller native soil particles that we're trying to protect underneath. Riprap gradation is characterized by the D50, which is the median rock dimension within a given pile of riprap. So a D50 of 12 inches indicates that exactly 50% of the material is either smaller or larger than 12 inches. This mixture of various sized rocks, i.e. the gradation, is what helps create that filter. The district has five distinct riprap gradations called VL, L, M, H, and VH. We're going to join Adam Dungan from Muller Engineering at the Fry Quarry in Idaho Springs to show us some examples of these gradations. Here we have all five types of Mile High Flood District's riprap. Type VL, which means very light, nominal D50 of six inches. Here, L. 50 of 9 inches, meaning light. Type M riprap, which means medium, and has a D50 of 12 inches. Type H riprap, which means heavy, and has a D50 of 18 inches. And finally, type VH, which means very heavy, and has a D50 of 24 inches. It's very heavy. <laughs> Thanks, Adam, for that helpful demonstration. Notice how much larger and heavier the D50 rocks got as he went, to the point that he couldn't physically lift the larger sizes. This is analogous to how we should think of where these different sizes of riprap should get used. The more erosive the location, the larger the riprap needs to be to resist the forces trying to pick up and move the rock. The steepness of the slope the riprap is placed upon also comes into play. As the steeper the slope, the more that gravity wants to move that rock as well. Please consult the district's criteria manual for more information about riprap sizing. Each of these riprap gradations will include a range of rock sizes. So type M riprap, which has a D50 of 12 inches, will include rocks as small as four inches and as large as 21 inches in the mix. Riprap is typically placed at a thickness of 1.75 to two times the D50. So type M riprap with a D50 of 12 inches would typically be placed in a layer that's 21 inches to 24 inches thick. In addition to the different sizes, there are three types of riprap mixes used in the district. They are conventional riprap, soil riprap, 
and void filled riprap. This is a pile of conventional riprap. Conventional riprap is commonly used for erosion protection at pipe outlets, bridge abutments and piers, and shoreline protection along dams. Conventional riprap has been used extensively throughout the district's history for erosion protection. However, in recent years, the district's preference is to use conventional riprap only where vegetation is not anticipated, like under a bridge where there is very little sunlight, or for small installations like pipe outfalls or other localized repairs. Conventional riprap is unsightly and creates some nuisance concerns, like rodents burrowing in the voids or humans twisting their ankles walking on it. Even well-graded riprap will still have visible voids within it, so it's not a very effective filter by itself. Over time, groundwater seeping through the ground can push the underlying finer soils out through the voids, or the action of water rising and receding through the exposed riprap can pull some of the finer soils through. We commonly refer to this type of erosion as piping. To prevent piping, small gravel, like the district's type two bedding material, and or a geotextile fabric need to be placed under the riprap to protect the underlying soil. Soil riprap refers to riprap that has all the voids filled with native soil or topsoil. To create soil riprap, the district recommends a mixture of two-thirds riprap and one-third soil by volume. Soil riprap can be buried with an additional layer of topsoil, providing a good growing medium for vegetation. The combination of soil and plant roots creates an excellent filter to protect the underlying soils. Bedding material is not needed with soil riprap because the soil and root structure prevents piping of the underlying soil. Soil riprap is used in applications where vegetation can be established and where frequent flows are less erosive than the resistive strength of the vegetation and soil. The riprap is designed to remain stable and provide protection even during extreme events where we may lose some of that vegetative cover. Vegetated soil riprap provides a natural, more aesthetic appearance than conventional riprap. Typically, you don't even know the soil riprap is there. Common uses for soil riprap in the district include bioengineering stream bank protection that combines rock and riparian vegetation, erosion protection at culverts and storm outfalls, buried rock swales, and buried emergency spillways for detention storage facilities that operate infrequently. Void-filled riprap, or VFR, is designed to emulate natural riffle rock material found in coarse gravel and cobble bed streams. It is comprised of conventional riprap with the voids filled with a well-graded mixture of cobbles, gravels, sands, and soil. The mixture creates a dense interlocking mass that keeps water flowing on the surface. VFR is a more suitable material than conventional or soil riprap in applications that will encounter a fairly constant flow of water. Where there is constantly flowing water, the soil in soil riprap will tend to get washed out if vegetation can't establish. VFR is generally only necessary up to the active channel or bank full flow, as this is the part of the cross-section that sees really frequent flow. Where VFR gets used, we typically transition to soil riprap somewhere up the stream bank. Because VFR is intended to mimic natural riffle rock material, there is an added benefit of groundwater to surface water connection, which creates an important ecological zone found in stream beds called the hyperaic zone, where many organisms spend part of their life cycle. Like soil riprap, VFR works very well as a growing medium for riparian vegetation, but it does not rely on roots for stability like soil riprap does. In applications where it is difficult to establish vegetation, VFR is better able to resist direct, prolonged impingement of water than soil riprap. Because of all of the additional materials that need to be added and mixed together, VFR is more challenging to install than soil riprap. VFR is commonly used for grade control structures such as riffles, 
bioengineering applications for string bank and bed protection, rock lines, swales, and rundowns, and erosion protection at culvert outlets. No bedding material is needed for VFR since the mixture of cobbles, gravels, sands, and soil filling the voids function as an internal filter to prevent piping of the subgrade. Getting the correct riprap size and gradation are common issues to look for during construction. A visit to the quarry can be insightful to understand potential problems and solutions. A stockpile of material could vary significantly from one side to the other. Through the visual sorting of larger sizes, different operators can also introduce variability. Here are some quick tips to make sure we've got the correct size and gradation. Inspect the initial deliveries of each material and adjust as needed before installation. Once appropriate size and gradation are achieved, leave a sample pile in the stockpile area that can be used as a quick comparison for future deliveries. Check stockpiled and delivered materials periodically to ensure consistency throughout the project. A helpful trick in the field is to remember the D50s and that the riprap gradations for each size generally extends to the D50 of the size above and the size below. For example, Type M riprap has a D50 of 12 inches, so you'd expect to see a rock at least as small as 9 inches, which is the D50 of Type L, to at least as large as 18 inches, which is the D50 of Type H. Even though type M has some rocks slightly smaller and larger than that, it's still a quick and helpful way to assess riprap stockpiles in the field. With bigger riprap like type H or VH, it can be difficult to preserve the gradation if the contractor is using equipment that's too small to pick up a bucket full of well-graded material. With too small a bucket, they'll likely pick up just one or two larger rocks or just a pile of smaller rocks. Both can lead to the wrong gradation during placement. If the smaller end of the riprap gradation appears to be lacking, it can help to bring in a load of a smaller riprap gradation or a different rock product like a vehicle tracking control rock or rock surge material. On the other end of the spectrum, it can also be a problem if we have a rock here or there that's obviously too large for the gradation called for. That can lead to gaps as the bigger rock won't interlock as well with the adjacent smaller rocks. In conventional riprap, bedding or geotextile fabric is generally required. If no bedding or geotextile fabric are shown in the design, check the soils and ask the design engineer for further clarification. They could have just missed it. We generally prefer bedding in lieu of geotextile fabric because it's a bit more forgiving and allows for easier plating of the riprap without worrying about tearing the fabric. Plating means we're pushing down on the riprap with an excavator bucket to flatten the surface and lock it into place. Plating allows us to adjust grades and helps integrate the riprap and bedding matrix. It also helps avoid point projections that can catch debris. Geotextile fabrics require smooth surface preparation to eliminate voids that could lead to future fabric movement and failure. Smooth surface preparation also helps avoid punctures when riprap gets placed on top. The availability of riprap suppliers has expanded to include both quarried and mined sources. Quarried material tends to be more angular and mined material tends to be more rounded. In general, angular rock interlocks better, but the rounded rock looks more natural. Both aesthetics and interlocking are important design considerations. When evaluating substitutions, it's a good idea to check with the design engineer to make sure project goals are being met. In rock sizing equations, rounded rock provides a little bit less erosion resistance than angular rock. This makes sense, I mean it's easier to roll or move a rounded rock than an angular rock. Substitutions may require increased rock thickness or other changes to meet the design intent. Soil and void filled riprap in wetland and native grass areas usually incorporate a topsoil layer to create a good growing medium. A common issue is that topsoil is placed in areas 
where frequent flows are present, leading to erosion and loss of topsoil, seed, and mulch. A solution is to install a biodegradable erosion control blanket, or ECB, to hold the topsoil in place until vegetation can establish. ECB applications over riprap generally require 2x4 wedge stakes for anchors. Anything smaller will probably break during installation. When we're along a perennial stream, we also need good trenching of the ECB along the water's edge at the toe of slope. Trenching should avoid compromising the rock matrix, particularly in VFR applications. We want to minimize impacts to the underlying rock. This can be accomplished with a modified trench detail like this one. For perennial streams, we don't need to place topsoil in the channel bottom, so the ECB is only placed on the stream banks. For riprap lined ditches or swales with infrequent flow, we will typically place topsoil across the bottom, so ECB will be needed. So in short, if you're placing topsoil on riprap, you probably need ECB as well. I hope you've enjoyed learning more about the various types of riprap, where they come from, how they're used, and what to look for if you're observing an installation. We'll have future videos that go into more detail about void-filled riprap, so be on the lookout for those. Thanks for watching.